that so we can we put that into the um we put that into the revenue and then we also do have a expense line um for the pres principal's fund that way we can keep track of exactly what has been spent and how much it has how much has been spent so it is in both revenue and in expenses and also to take into consideration the fact that people will donate directly and specifically to the principal's fund so that there's there's a yeah you get my point yep are there any other or any at all questions about what you see on the budget or what you heard tonight? I maybe wanted just to make a clarification. We um, did change one thing where we bunched up um, our um, revenue income as event income instead of specifying uh, like the auction or specific events. Just because we realized that and when COVID happened that there's a lot of stuff that we had to tweak. So if just putting events and a, just a goal of what we want to reach, it made it easier for us to be able to shift and to, to do maybe another type of fundraiser that wouldn't be in person via or instead of you know, doing it online. Or So we just bunched it as events and just having a fundraising goal. Um, so that's kind of why we we did that. So it would give us a little bit more freedom, but still try to hit that target of um, the amount we wanted to fundraise. And then with that, I can still keep track of like what, like the specific event. So like if, you know, for RAM or for the auction or for if we ever did a pie sale, or whatever, um, I can keep track of those individual ones, but the, the whole amount that we're trying to raise would just be under events instead of having them each subdivided in specific amounts that we're trying to get for each. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the budget? So moved. In a second. Who, who were those folks that did the first and the second? I saw Gail for the second, but it was it Elizabeth? Yeah, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Uh, did the motion. Got it. Okay, um, all those in favor? Show a hand or do a thumbs up, please. Thank you. Um, I remember anytime, I mean, any further questions, you still please feel free to ask them about the budget, um, either to me or to Brianna. Um, and as you all know, things can often change and that means we kind of have to finagle things a little bit, but um, feel free to ask whenever you need some clarification. Um, membership committee, uh, Ardina and or Gail, if there's anything you'd like to report on the membership drive. Uh, so it was really successful again. Um, we uh, registered 229 members. Um, so that's great. I think that is more than what we had last year. Um, quite a few new families, which is really what we want to see as well. Um, the gross amount that we um, received was $13,540, uh, which is really great because our objective was $11,000. Uh, and we netted $10,000 uh, around there. We're still kind of figuring out those numbers. Uh, we did start uh, delivering some of the swag. Not everything is in, so we're still working on that. But um, some people have received some little stuff on their doorstep or delivered at city. So 
Um, so I think it went really well. I think it's well received. I think it's something that is, um, um, I think it's nice to have that as a, you know, just uh, showing our, the pride we have in city and having little things that we can just do to, to show that. So all in all, I think it was great. Um, hopefully we, you know, uh, can see those new members show up at the meetings. I know right now is the end of the marking period. So I'm guessing a lot of families are <laughs> focusing on that, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, I just, it was, it went really well. Um, hopefully we can keep that up just because I think it's a great way to, to show, um, it's an easy way to just have members sign up um, and it's a, a great way to ha actually gather information on the members instead of having it on paper. It just comes directly digitally. So it's, it's kind of convenient. So um, Ardina, I don't know if you had anything to add. Nothing more to add. That was a great report. Thank you. Um, at some point along the way, um, I think I maybe put this in the Friday announcements. I had just a, a very little side by side of what like the gross in the net of the pie sale is versus the gross in the net of the membership drive. And if you just want to talk purely dollars, the membership drive works better. Um, there's not necessarily like that community building component of it where we're all like covered in flour in the kitchen okay. together, but it also alleviates the membership drive alleviates some of the issues that have occurred in the past with the pie sale. Um, so I'm just saying this was not really a bad thing. Um, you know, and it, it's worked for us monetarily. And I hope that we can make up some of the community building with other events through the year. I think it's also early in the year where the pie sale was really hard to find new families. So it was often kind of the same families that would come or have to stay pretty late. So, you know, I think the community building, it's nice to have it kind of down the road so that people start getting adjusted a little bit more to the school. So, um, so yeah, and obviously with everything going on, it, there's not a lot that, you know, is under our control really. So it's kind of nice to have something that's um, easy to do, not in person currently. Um. So as far as new fundraising opportunities, um, we do have one this year. A former parent contacted Mr. Huppert, like it was right around orientation time and um, asked if we would like to get back in on, um, uh, I want to call it money laundering, but we'll go with the millionaire party um, uh, authorized and licensed by the state of Michigan. Um, but it's a, a gambling room that happens out at Westgate bowling alley and we would be the designated charity. So that's how this is all legal that they have a designated charity. Um, our role in it is to, uh, sell, chips or redeem chips. That's, that's all we do. So we um, have applied to renew our license. Um, it's a specific license with the Michigan Gaming Commission um, that's being processed right now. And we have dates in November and December. Both of these events are just prior to the holidays, but the November dates are the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, and the December dates are the 20th through the 23rd. Um, I'm told by this former parent and the owner of the um, millionaire party, Rounders, it's called, it's the company name, 
that we can make upwards of five grand per event, um, possibly more. So we're gonna give it a try. Um, the first one in December, um, I'm in November, a lot of the executive board are planning to volunteer. We will be looking for other volunteers just basically to sit there with us and sell chips. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I've talked to the senior all night party committee about taking some of the dates in December or all of them if they want, but this might be um, a way for other groups to also be involved. It's a very small number of volunteers. Um, it goes from 2 p.m. until 2 a.m. each day, and we have to have two people there the entire time. So if we split that shift in half, it would be four people per day for the event. So if people from other groups like speech and debate or a theater parent or somebody from a different group band um, wanted to come and work those um, events, we could proportionately split the profits um, between whatever groups happen to work at or to the city general budget. So I think this will be a little bit easier to organize than, you know, $2 beer night at the Van Handel Arena. Um, but, you know, I might just be traumatized by that. Um, we'll see how it goes. We are allowed, um, the state allows us to do up to four of these per year. So we'll see how November and December go um, and let that determine if we want to continue this next year or not, or or if it's just time for me to retire, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's the newest fundraising opportunity that we have. Um, and we do plan to do RAM in a couple of weeks. We're very excited to have the recycled art market back. Um, chili cook-off is gonna be a go. And after that, we're just gonna have to see how things are. Um, can't make any promises, but hopefully this will be a good money maker. Um, you, you mentioned chili cook-off. Um, are, are there any people or uh, plans in motion already or anything at all? Or are we planning on doing it virtually again? Um, I don't think anything's been decided. I can say though that the Creston Brewery just reopened this week. So next on the agenda is admin updates. So Mrs. Vanderbilt, if you care to share. I was told I couldn't pass. So <laughs> let me pull up my text message from Ryan. No, um, he just wanted me to point out a few things since we haven't seen anyone since open house. Um, one of the first big things he wanted to know, and I don't know how many people have noticed, but our shift away from the eighth hour epic, and we're refocusing on the core, like our core. So it's IB core, bringing all students back to the core values. I think the last couple of years being as rocky as they have been, um, there's definitely been some gaps in informing our clientele about the international baccalaureate programs that we offer. Um, so we're bringing everybody back to the core. We're going back to learner profile, CAS, all the good stuff. Um, we want everyone to be on the same page and reflective as to what it means to be an IB learner. We're also going back to the basics of econometrology um, because that is supposed to be interwoven through everything that we do. So those are two big things that we're making that shift. So EPIC technically is no longer, it's now going to be core advisory. And that will be our eighth hour class is core advisory focused on IB and econometrology. Um, we also had homecoming a few weeks ago and many of you probably noticed that it was a little bit different than it has been in the past. 
So spirit weeks um, in the past have been very focused on grade level. And as we implement the house model, which helps build relationships, uh, seventh grade all the way through 12th grade, we really wanted to make homecoming week focused um, more on the houses and that alignment. And the senior class was absolutely amazing in adopting that and helping us implement that. Um, it was super successful despite our rain day, which caused a lot of anxiety, keeping 900 plus kids in the building. It's gonna get noisy a minute. My kids are getting home from soccer, I apologize. Um, but we had 900 kids in the building and it was interesting, but it was successful. So um, it was better when it dried up and we could get them outside, but it was good. Uh, let's see. Ryan is currently working on a fall principal letter that will go home snail mail to all houses. Um, just kind of updating everybody on what's going on with, with the school and implementation and all that kind of good stuff. Um, they are here. Um, we also have, uh, oh, the Spanish sub that we have currently in Spanish too, um, is someone that has an education degree. So we're lucky there. And he's a Spanish minor. He is not currently a certified Spanish teacher, but we really feel like we're taking a step in the right direction. We know we're not there yet, but we're short on applicants. Um, we have reached out to the district to talk about um, any native Spanish speakers that we get in contact with and potentially um, an emergency certification. So now we're going that route, knowing that the Spanish teaching pool is not, you know, there. Um, but we're trying to go every way that we can to make sure that we have the best opportunities for these kids in Spanish too. Um, we also have the course route that we're offering for the seniors class of 2022. It is a one year option um, for the students at this point who don't wanna go for the full diploma um, and they consider going the course route, which means they will still have three HLs and they will test in one SL, um, but they won't have to do two of their SLs, like the inner internal assessments or testing for exams, and they will not have to do the extended essay. So that's a one-year modification, and it's um, something that Mr. Antima and I started investigating last year, and then we really worked with the district to iron out um, all the details to make sure that we were offering the best opportunity to our students. Um, yeah, currently, I guess uh, about one-third of the seniors are taking advantage. We still have some people on the fence asking questions, but I mean, so far, it kind of feels like um, all the students are being super reflective. I don't think anyone's jumping into any decisions rashly. Um, they're asking questions, they're asking the right questions, and then they're reflecting on how it impacts them. And that's our biggest thing, right? Mental health and their well-being, and those are the big things. So yeah, so that's where we're at with that. So I don't know if I missed anything. I know I have a whole sheet of questions, but I don't know if now is the time or once my kids quiet down, so. Do you want me to read the questions and we just can play it out and see how that goes or, okay. Uh, first question was, uh, there's a couple, I, I'll try to bunch them actually. Uh, there's a couple of Schoology questions uh, one is, it says, it has come to my attention that some assignments that are handed in in paper form still show up digitally and show as overdue. Is there a way to hand in a form that states handed in paper in form to make it easier to follow overdue assignments for students? Also, is there a to-do list similar to Google Classroom that can be developed? So that's a great question. We've been trying to figure out all the ins and outs of Schoology, and it's um, it's been quite a pra uh, process. We've been told that there's all these capabilities, but currently our big focus has been working on getting the IB rubric um, in there because that is something that Schoology can't figure out how to get the MYP rubrics, the eight-point system, in there and show the numbers while still calculating the district percentage. Um, so we did just figure out that there are ways to put in assignments and not calculate them, 
Um, as far as I know, there is not currently a to-do list. However, on the student screen, I believe that there's an option to use a workload something, and then they can see their assignments that are available for the whole week. Um, but we're working through those features um, right now. We're supposed to get more training. And then John Tyndall has actually been going to trainings and then been working with the staff in pieces. So I feel like we're starting to finally get the ball rolling and understand Schoology a little bit more. Okay. Another Schoology question was, are grades in Schoology really weighted when calculated grade averages? It seems that one assignment missing brings the average grade down immediately to a D and E level. And it's very hard to bring it back up. So the, the, so are the my, my think it's are the categories really being weighed like the 20% for participation yeah. and the district assessment, et cetera. Uh, Cause it, it seems apparently that it, once there's one missing assignment, apparently it says that it's hard to bring that up. So so um, there is, the teachers had to go in and put in the district weights, but that was due, so they didn't have to do that the first few weeks because we all thought it was preset, but now all teachers, it was supposed to be as of October 1st, I believe, they had to update the weights, so the 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay. So they so should that now should be... all be updated. Okay. Yes. Uh, so then we're going yeah. to different questions. How are the students getting their work if they are in quarantine? They're supposed to be able to access everything via Schoology. Okay. Um, are there any updates for the 2022 graduation? So I'm guessing location. Well, I know I know that the date has been changed, but location, are there any new things? Nope. So basically they changed the date and then they opened up the forum. Uh, there was like a senior... They were gathering senior data and then they were going to bat, uh, reassess placement and um, ask for input from all the schools, but they have yet to publish a location. Okay. How is the school handling the teaching position that wasn't filled, uh, that are still not filled? Uh, will long-term subs be at parent-teacher conferences? So um, we are handling that situation each day. Um, it's only the one, we still have the one, it's just Spanish. We were able to fill the empty social studies position with Hannah Birchie. Um, she's new, she did her student teaching at CA Frost and she's been a great addition to our staff. Um, currently in the long-term subbing position for Spanish is Noah Kellogg who did his teaching, teaching assistant or was a teaching assistant um, at City a few years ago. Again, he is um, certified in history and has a Spanish minor. But since he is employed through the subsystem, the only way he would be at conferences is if he volunteers because he does not get paid to attend the conferences. Okay. Um, how are the new teachers brought up to speed with IB grading and contact expectations, particularly those teaching 11th and 12th grade? So um, all of our teachers will attend or have attended IB training just as we have in the past. Um, we also pair them up with mentor teaching. So anyone that's new to DP um, is part of a training group that gets brought up to speed. I'm trying to think of who would even be new in DP this year, but I'm drawing a blank. But yes, we, um, we definitely go through all the different processes to make sure that they have access to the guides, that they're linked up with anyone and everyone that's already taught those subjects. So we have, for example, maybe a couple new teachers that are teaching uh, TOK, but we've had so many teachers in our building that have taught that in various years that we have plenty of resources within the building. So the question is, I would like to hear how the school is approaching this time of real transition while recognizing that our young people are still experiencing COVID global pandemic, two years of separation from peers, traditional learning environments. Could there be a more intentional on-ramp time for the students that have experienced this time of disruption to settle back into school? Are counsel counselors regularly and proactively checking in with students? Could there be more time between classes for students to decompress? So amen to all of that. Um, 
Absolutely. So when it comes to passing time, our hands are tied because passing time links to instructional time and we have to get in so many minutes. Um, I don't, I think that we had looked at potentially trying to extend passing time in five minutes is what is set across the district. So there's no time extensions between class. However, we have been trying to build that time into eighth hour. Um, so eighth hour a few years ago used to be fully structured. And then we implemented the 30, 30, 30, where it was um, you know, 30 minutes of announcements, 30 minutes of a mini lesson, and then 30 minutes for students to just work on stuff, more like a study hall. Um, so we do try and build that in. And we've asked that on the 90 minute days that teachers, you know, keep in mind that 90 minutes is too long for students for direct instruction. So we've asked them to build in time in their 90 minute classes as well. As for counselors, most of our counselors have been in classes all year long. Um, it's hard to make a schedule to check in with 900 kids uh, individually, but we're definitely making sure that we're communicating with teachers and encouraging them um, to look for kids and communicate those. We have been upping uh, Rebecca Back's caseload um, for students who are struggling with mental health and maybe don't have an outside resource. Um, she's a great resource inside the building. Um, but our counselors have been probably more than I've ever seen scheduling themselves to go in and talk to groups in, um, within their classes instead of waiting for grade level meetings when we have 200 kids in the auditorium. Um, they've been going in English classes or pushing into other classes all day long. Um, and then, you know, it's most of us, uh, the four administrators, we have lines at our doors all day long too. Um, besides just feeling overwhelmed, we've seen um, an uptick in uh, behavior issues just because Kids are so excited to be back in school and be back with their friends that they don't always think about the fact that they're in a school setting. So I think we're all going through this transitional period where we're trying to remember what it's like to be students, to be teachers, to be admin, to be back in the building together and know what our daily goals are. So um, we are taking into consideration that there's a transitional period and working through it each day as best we can. Um, but if you know there are additional ideas and resources, we're always looking to make sure that we have the right supports for our students. Uh, so uh, one of our students pointed out that Miss Muzio is new for seniors. Uh, we were wondering. <laughs> Yes. So, so yes. So uh, Nicole Muzio is new to seniors. She took over for uh, Jeff Boggs. She was Kurt Risley's student teacher a few years ago, so has familiarity with uh, DP as he is our ESS teacher. Um, she also is attending IB training. Um, Mr. Thane, when he left last year, he spent a month before he left um, setting both um, Ms. Muzio and Mr. Warren, who is also new to DP now that I think about science, um, with all the tools they would need to be successful and to prepare our juniors and seniors um, for the implementation of um, the internal assessment. And then, like I said, Nicole and Max are both uh, working through IB training and then have been paired with a mentor both within their subject area and elsewhere in the building. So someone wanted to give kudos to admin. I've heard many comments about you all checking in with kids, asking if they, things are okay. So I will second that. I know that you are doing a lot for our kids and making sure that they are um, in, a, in a good place. Um, so even though it, it'll take adjustments for everyone, I think we're all feeling it. But um, I have mentioned, I don't know, personally to my kids, grace and courtesy um, for everyone, because we don't know how everyone's affected by it. And I think that is shown tremendously with the teachers and the admin at City. So thank you. That, that is it for the questions that were on the Google Doc. So, but if anyone has questions that they want to ask, uh, please unmute and go ahead. I have a quick one. Um, just asking for um, the senior all night party. Um, 
what is the chance that graduation date could possibly change again if location changes? Yeah, Lori, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have that answer. Um, they were they were pretty well set on our grad date just because it fit with ID exams and everything else. Um, that's why they chose the new date because of the pushback. But that's a great point. I don't know um, what will happen with the venue. If they choose, say, like Hausman, there's, they're not changing it. Um, and but I, I unfortunately can't answer that with 100% certainty. Do you know um, how long the whole process is with the student leadership? I forgot what they're called, that are meeting with the administration and with the board. Oh, like um, the student rep group that's going down there? Yeah. I can't, not the, it's not the district student council, right? Is it? I don't know. I think it is that, that yes, it's the district it's long student <laughs> council where there's like two reps from each school. Oh yeah. That they come meet, down and, um, and work with the district. I feel like they're there a lot. So <laughs> um, they were just there last week and they have another meeting next week. So I know that they want to get something on the calendar as soon as possible. They were shooting for their first meeting in November. So they were hoping to announce something. We usually hear some sort of scuttlebutt, but I can tell you so far, I have not heard anything. Anybody else have a question for Mrs. Vandergleet? I have a quick question that just popped up. I just, uh, by talking to my student, uh, there was that Google calendar that made sure that there weren't like many like tests piled up. It seems that um, it's not put in place this year. And there's been a couple of instances where there's like three tests in the same or even in the same subject. So I know it's hard with a new system. Um, is there anything that is tried to be put in place so that that's balanced? I'm glad you asked that. So we had a staff meeting on Monday and we realized that some teachers were trying to implement something on Schoology, but didn't realize it wasn't viewable by others. So we are now back on the assessment calendar that's linked to CHMSIB um, and all new teachers have been added and we provided 20 minutes during the staff meeting for everyone to put on their major assessments, projects, tests, and any planned assessments, including quizzes, which we haven't done before, uh, for second marking period. So that is an expectation and it was reviewed on Monday. I think someone's gonna be really happy when I say that. <laughs> So in the interest of time, we'll just um, go ahead and move on. There's only a couple other things left on the agenda. Um, however, you may still type your questions in. Um, we can answer them later if we do run out of time tonight. Um, just so everybody's aware, um, Lori Box is graduating this year. Well, not her herself, but she's been taking care of our website and um, making that much more functional for us over the last year and a half or so more. I don't know. Um, so we really appreciate everything that Lori has done. And she is going to be working with a parent from zoo school who will be taking over that role. Um, Carol or anybody, do you have, are there any updates for RAM that we should know about other than it's happening November 6th? It is, RAM is happening. Um, it'll be uh, in the gym on November 6th. 
We have a full gym full of vendors who are excited to come back and do RAM. Um, masks, of course, are required and everybody knows that. Um, we also are going to have tamales Mary there for the food truck. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. They'll be there from 11 until people stop ordering. So, um, I said, they'd probably stay until four if people continue to eat. So, um, that's exciting. If you can help spread the word, um, posters and postcards are going out now. Um, but you know, spread the word on your social networks and, and any place else you can think of doing that. Um, cause it's a pretty big fundraiser for us. And, uh, so yeah, everything's, everything's in place. We do need volunteers and the volunteer link has gone out the last couple of weeks in Alicia's newsletter. Um, a link went up today to help with the, um, senior grad They'll They'll be selling coffee and donuts. That's their first fundraiser. And we need volunteers for that as well. So, um, kind of going to be all hands on deck because we need volunteers to set up on Friday and then to do the event on Saturday and then for the all night party uh, table Saturday morning as well. So all kinds of opportunities for you and your children. Well, you put it out a volunteer opportunity for the setup stuff. Yep. So that's already been sent out. Um, it was put in the village and then it was in Alicia's last two newsletters and we will um, post it again as well. Okay. And Eliza's already signed up for it. She doesn't know. She is. She and Tara were the very first that signed up. It was lovely. Just so you know, it is swim conferences for girls. So there will be yes, many girls that will not be <laughs> available to help. But there's lots of other people who can. So if you're available, no, boy. Better, <laughs> please choose a slot and sign up. That's all. Thank you. Um, are there any updates, any, anything we need to know about the senior all night? Carol, Lori, anybody? Uh, I think, yeah, our biggest um, issue right now, as Lori said, is we can't reserve a venue until we know for sure that that's the date. So we don't want to be putting down deposits and reserving venues if that's going to change. So we're just sort of like in this holding pattern right now, um, you know, planning fundraisers and that kind of thing, but, um, just hoping to, to have a solid date that we know of. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions for the night? You can either unmute yourself or type in the chat if you want to. For our November meeting, um, John Helmholt will be joining us to answer questions. And in December, Dr. Ron Gorman will join our meeting also to answer any questions. Um, and for each of these meetings, uh, we'll post a Google doc that you can pre-ask your questions on if you'd like to. They can always be asked at the meeting as well. But if there are no other questions, I'm going to call it. I will motion. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't think we're getting any argument. So um, thank you, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate your time. Um, have a good rest of the week. See you soon. Bye.